Should we take the roll? Okay. Whenever uh, you're ready, Mike. Okay, here's the roll call. Um, let's see, Brian Johnson. Here. Jeff Wirtz. Here. Uh, Glenn Sherman and Ace and myself, Mike Piaf. And Tara is excused, that's correct. <laughs> Moving on to approval of the agenda. I moved. Okay, any second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, approval of the of the minutes from April fifth of twenty twenty one. I think we actually have to hold a vote oh, on the on the uh, on the minutes. Whoops, on the agenda, right, Brian? Just, just oh. Yeah, I have to approve it. Actually, have to have a motion to approve the agenda. And we did. Do we actually have a vote there? We just need to call the question. There was a motion in the second, I believe. So, yeah, all you just need to say is all yeah. in favor, Mike. All in favor. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Matt. Uh, all you got to do is just say all in favor after you have your second. Oh. Say all in favor and then yep. the all, 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 all aye. in favor. Aye. 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 Can you please? And opposed? Who made the motion and seconded? I it was. I'm sorry. Who made the motion and seconded? Just, can we remember who made the motion and seconded for that? Uh, Johnson was the motion. And I th think John might have got the second. Yep. I think. Uh, John Jones. Yep. Thank you. All right, and that is that is the item is approved. Okay. Okay. Move on to the uh, approval of the minutes. So moved. And second. Uh, I'll second. Jack Okay. Um, all those in favor of the minutes? Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Minutes have been approved. On to regular business. Are we ready for that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, approve, approve, uh, 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 approval of the minutes from April 5th meeting of the Economic Development Authority. I'm sorry. Consideration yep. of possible action on the adoption of the Brownfields revolving loan fund policies and procedures. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think Mr. Buchanan is going to provide that report. Yep. All right. Here, uh, Chair. All right, um, just a quick background. Um, so last year, the EPA awarded the city an $800,000 grant to create a brand new Brownfields Revolving Loan Fund program. Um, and that um, essentially provides loans and subgrants for cleanup activities on Brownfield sites. Um, this is a program that uh, the city has been trying to secure for Quite a few. We've, for a long time, we've had these assessment grants, which allow us to um, do some of the research and the testing on properties, but we haven't had access to funds to provide to developers or property owners um, actual cleanup assistance. And so this tool gives us that ability um, to assist developers and property owners with the actual cleanup activity on their properties. Um, so we secured that grant last year. Um, we are required to quick kick in a 20% cost share um, to get this program up and running. Um, it does come with a five year period. So at the end of 2025 is when this grant program um, ends technically. However, it's a revolving loan fund. So the purpose is that it's going to revolve through and be a sustainable program for many, many years to come way past 2025. Um, we are required to hire our own qualified environmental professional, our own consultant to kind of help us oversee kind of the technical aspects of these, of these funds. Um, for those of you who are on, on the time, we um, did secure that, that QEP last fall with GEI and Stantec, um, both um, signing on to help us with, with this program. Um, and we're also required to approve a new policies um, and procedures document, which you today 
Um, the draft of that document was included in your packet. So hopefully you had a time to, to peruse that. I know it's a longer document and um, a little bit drier material, but uh, it's, it's the rules, the policies, the procedures with this uh, program that we are required to approve. Um, and the, really the purpose of the document is to establish the city's process for um, application review, underwriting procedures, um, loan and subgrant parameters, and then the loan and subgrant servicing procedures. Those are kind of the, the sections of the program that we have some local EP, the US EPA has given us kind of um, uh, ownership over, the, over, over those items. Um, the document also conveys um, those federal EPA requirements that we really don't have any, any say in. Those are the rules and we just need to make sure that the borrowers understand them. And so those program eligibility um, regarding the applicants, um, the sites and the projects, um, community involvement, uh, cleanup oversight, and uh, compliance with um, applicable federal requirements beyond just what EPA requires. Um, looking at some of the things that we have control over um, is the application process. Um, luckily, the City of Green Bay already has an established revolving loan fund uh, committee, and we oversee uh, two, at least two, actually three revolving loan fund programs that I'm aware of at least. Uh, Wendy manages um, two business revol small business revolving loan fund programs. Um, several of you, I believe, are familiar with those. So we did kind of already have a framework in place to get started, um, which we relied heavily on. Um, we, uh, we did work with our consultants to help us um, kind of uh, develop this process as well. Um, we decided it made good sense to kind of have a two-step process with this program. Um, the first step being that pre-application process to first um, meet with the, the interested party, um, familiarize them with the requirements, um, and then make sure that they have all those minimum requirements um, um, to be eligible, making sure that the applicant is eligible, that the site is eligible, um, and the overall project is eligible. Um, we also want to get a a preliminary understanding of their project and the redevelopment that they're proposing and a preliminary budget. Um, after that process, um, if we feel like it, uh, they've, they've met all those minimum requirements, then they would move on to that final application step, which is where, where we really dig into the details with their performa, their financial information, and really um, try to get some more um, specific information with their um, with their redevelopments um, so we can score that. Um, and then that process um, goes over to our established revolving loan fund committee. Um, at that time, st the staff would make a recommendation for approval or denial, a, a recommendation on the terms um, and the interest rates. Um, and the RLF committee would be the, the body to um, to those, just as they already do with our existing RLF programs. Um, we do have some control over our review criteria. Um, the EPA um, really wanted us to have a pretty firm understanding of what um, we would be looking um, with our, our, our projects that we want to fund. They wanted us to have that understanding up front when we were submitting our initial application. Um, um, to make our goals with this program do overlap with their goals. Um, beyond just the standard project feasibility of the finances of it all, um, we also want to make sure that the projects do comply with our existing plans that we've got here locally. We want to make sure that if you know a developer is coming forward with a, a proposal, we want to make sure that it, it complies uh, with what we've already kind of established. We don't want any we don't want to fund any projects that really fly in the face of, of groundwork we've already um, done as a city. Um, in addition to that, we obviously want to make sure that the projects do mitigate threats to, to health and environment. Um, we want to make sure that the projects do have a, a positive impact on sensitive populations on the Fox River watershed as well. 
um, that they promote neighborhood revitalization. Uh, we'd, we would really much like to see these kinds of projects um, support um, creation of new housing and jobs. Um, and environmental sustainability is another criteria that uh, we'd be looking at uh, when an application comes through. Um, a quick overview of the general loan parameters. Um, we would be looking at funding projects um, of at least $100,000 uh, and above. Um, in total, of course, we've got an $800,000 uh, RLF program. Um, we have very limited funds set aside for, um, for consulting oversight. And so to reduce the workload and the cost for consulting, we wanna support bigger projects rather than several smaller ones. So that's kind of the reason why we have that minimum $100,000 um, loan requirement. Um, we want these to be as low interest as possible. Um, generally speaking, we're not um, going to probably see anything exceed 4% interest. Um, maximum of 20 years, uh, 20 year terms with monthly payments. Um, no penalties for early payoff. Um, we'd be open to interest only payments during that initial remediation work. This is kind of similar to how we set up several of our business RLF programs where sometimes when the business is just getting started shortly after getting that loan, um, they will sometimes consider interest um, or um, yeah, that interest only payments to get started. Um, 20% cost share is a requirement um, to help us meet our own local cost share. Um, and then uh, some of the general subgrant parameters. Um, generally speaking, we're looking at possibly offering grants as well um, to eligible entities. These uh, do include local governments and tribes and nonprofit organizations. Um, we'd, be looking to offer possibly two grants of $38,500 or one grant of $77,000. Um, unfortunately, we can't offer as, as much in grants. And this is an RLF program. We have a responsibility to make sure that this program um, continues for many years to come. And so if we can keep it revolving through, we can fund more projects. So that's why we have a lower budget with grants. Um, and essentially, it's the same criteria for loan applicants as it is for, sub, for, for subgrants. Um, and then I'll just quickly mention that um, we do have a pretty robust community involvement process with this program. Um, there will be site-specific community relations plans, um, which will establish a unique approach for involving and informing the community throughout the cleanup process. And we'll have a public meeting, at least one public meeting with each RLF funded project to make sure that the, the residents near that project site are involved, they're informed, and they have plenty of opportunity to, to weigh in. Um, that's the presentation. Are there any questions? Man, I just had one for you. Uh, you know, and I did read through the document. You're right, it's dry, but it's also pretty, like, I feel like pretty boiler, you know, boiler template type of stuff. Um, the one piece, though, that, that caught my attention, it, when you say, I mean, this, the revolving loan fund is only applicable to the city of Green Bay, right? Like the geographic boundaries of where the oh, project yes, or the yes, redevelopment yes. project would occur is within the city limits. So when when you talk about the ability to uh, have um, grants or permits or tribal entities, certainly the tribal makes sense. Obviously, they have a big chunk in the city. W would it be then just City of Green Bay and the county that would also potentially apply, or w what other users do you see on that front? Um, the RDA is a would be a, a okay. separate entity underneath the umbrella of the city. So that would be possibly another one. Those are the, the ones that come to my mind as well. well I think on a very, organizations. On a rare, very rare occasion, you might have another adjoining entity owning property in the city as well. Like we own some property in Bellevue. Um, it's not common, but once in a while, especially okay. if it's contaminated, you know, they may, okay. they may have acquired it. 
or annexation or something. Sure, and that's helpful. I was just trying to envision like what that scenario might look like. Um, and then uh, if, if I read correctly, um, it sounded like there would potentially with non profit, there would be the potential for, was it a 30% forgiveness? Oh, for a loan, yes. If they were to do a loan, um, we could, uh, we would consider, um, yeah. Okay, so, so that would, would that be part of the original uh, request or is that something that comes after the fact? Um, I guess the way I would envision it would be part of that original request. Um, Wendy, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that as well. I think, I think they would call out in the application process. So it'd be part of the initial request. So we would know who the entities are and what their interests are and what piece of the puzzle they are so that when we analyze the grant funds that would, and we'd also structure the interest or whatever would all um, be involved with whichever entity um, would be applied applying because it might be different interest rates or things for nonprofit versus profit or grants or no grant and all those things. So we would figure that out through the application process. Well, Alder Johnson, if you're talking specifically about the forgiveness component, I think that's, you know, I don't think, I think if, they're, if they're requesting a loan, I don't think they should be asking the forgiveness of the loan right up in front in the application. So I think that would be issued as a loan, it would be set up and structured in the loan agreement as a loan uh, with the possibility to come in at some point and request a justification as to why they would request some forgiveness if it been basically changing it to a grant at that point. Um, if they're actually applying for a loan, it, it would be processed and set up as a loan with certainly the ability to come back and, and, and change that and request that forgiveness in the future. It's, I don't think that's something, it's otherwise, they're just asking for a grant. So I think if they, if, they, if they apply for a loan, it's gonna be set up as a loan with the ability to review it later. Okay, and then and then just one final thing, Matt. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we don't have a lot of tools right now when it comes to environment, environmental remediation costs, particularly with those involved with the private sector. And I'm just thinking is oftentimes used for that, whether it's upfront or incorporated into a pay-go. I mean, are we, I mean, do you see this um, operating in lieu of a TIF request or do you see it working in tandem? It could work in tandem. Okay. And I'm just trying to visualize, right, if, if it would perhaps maybe alleviate sometimes the burden of those requests, uh, if particularly on overextended uh, to districts. Yep, exactly. Okay. And do, do you see a great deal of demand right now coming from the private sector for these types of programs? Um, yes and no. I, it, we have had lots of property owners and developers um, come to us uh, for the assessment process where they are looking for resources um, to help with the cleanup. And aside from TIF, we really, really don't have resources to assist with that. Um, with this particular program, we are to, the challenges that I mentioned before with our, our limited um, funds available for oversight. Um, we have, we are looking to fund larger projects, $100,000 plus loan projects with this. Um, so it would have to be a pretty substantial project. We do have some very substantial um, cleanup projects in the community on the horizon. Um, um, in the shipyard area, the Badger site, um, looking up north at, near the Polium area. Um, so I think there are projects on the horizon that could certainly utilize these funds. Okay, good job. Thanks. Okay, should we move on then to informational? So, say, Matt, do you need, would you like a motion to approve those guidelines essentially? That's what you're looking for? Yeah, we would be looking for uh, adoption, approval of um, the, the policy, policies and procedures. I would move to adopt as presented. I'll second it. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 That was, was that moved by Brian Johnson, seconded by Glenn Sherman? By Mike. By oh, Mike. Mike. Yep, was a second, yep. And, and those opposed? None, okay. Uh, informational, Brownfields program updates. All right, that's me again. One moment.
All right. So aside from our revolving loan fund program, uh, we got an assessment grant. So we, uh, um, Ace, for your benefits, um, since you're new to the uh, uh, $300,000 um, grant from EPA to assess uh, brownfield sites throughout this, we've um, started this one here in 20, um, and basically the purpose of these funds is um, help property owners and developers um, with um, getting a better handle on their properties so they can understand if there's uh, contamination on there that might need to be addressed before redevelopment. Um, and so looking at our current grant, we've uh, spent about 39% of our budget so far or about $118,000. Um, we've assessed seven sites. This is our list. Um, some of the bigger projects are the Badger Sheet Metal site um, here in the, in the South Broadway corridor. Um, we've uh, assessed a couple sites just south of Mason on Broadway as well. Um, the former parking lots, and um, we also have a couple of uh, assessment projects up here on, on Vanderbrack, on the former um, Eagles Club. Um, since our last program update, um, I would say probably the majority of our Badger Sheet Metal Site, former Badger Sheet Metal Site at 420 South Broadway. Um, we have overall invested about $35,000 worth of grant funds on, uh, on this site with testing. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more, um, primarily because um, here recently, just last month actually, um, the Redevelopment Authority accepted a planning option on the site, a three-month planning option with Impact 7. Um, so here the image at the top is the existing Badger Sheet Metal site. Um, on the, it's just a, uh, a SketchUp concept, um, very preliminary concept of how a site could lay out there, a redevelopment could lay out there. Um, their proposal would be 238 apartments and 9,400 square feet of retail space, a green roof. Um, this proposal was really crafted on um, the, the shipyard corridor um, redevelopment guide that the EDA approved last fall, if you remember. Um, there were some concepts in that document that um, we prepared to help guide developers when they, were, when they would come to us to submit proposals for redevelopment. This was one of those sites and their concept that they're proposing really mirrors what the EDA approved back last fall. Um, so it's exciting. So I need to see this project start to come forward. It's still very preliminary, um, but to make sure that it does um, move forward, we wanna make sure that we um, assess the site to, to the best of our ability um, to get a better handle on where all the, the contamination is and um, what needs to be done to address it. Um, developments, um, if, if it moves forward as proposed, we're looking at possibly $52.7 million of leverage um, leverage is key with securing additional grants. The EPA, you know, when we submit applications to get more grant funds, they always want to know how far did our previous grants get put to use? What, what private funds were leveraged um, based on that previous assessment grant work? And so this one would go really far um, if it were to move forward as proposed. So, so we're excited about this one. Um, also, um, in addition to our assessment grants, we have a, a cleanup grant, $500,000 from EPA for the shipyard site, which is of course, just across the street to the east um, from the Badger site. Um, we also have a million dollars in grants and cleanup, uh, cleanup grants from the WEDC uh, for the shipyard site. So far, we've spent a little over a million in remediation. Um, we brought in fill last summer, new fill material to, to cap the site, to get it shovel ready. Um, and just last month, month um, in May, we finalized a development agreement, which we've been working on for quite a while, but it's final now. Uh, that's with Merge Urban Development. Um, they're proposing 225 apartments on that, on the north side of the shipyard site. Um, and that would leverage about 21 million uh, private dollars. 
outcome is what we anticipate at this point. Um, of course, there's a lot of public am amenities that are proposed on the shipyard site, and we'll be starting later this fall uh, with the waterfront improvements uh, to go in first. Um, and that will start with um, uh, kayak launch, marina, and uh, riverfront trail promenade. Any questions? That's exciting. The 30 some percent of the assessment grant funds have been utilized so far and that almost 40 almost 40 okay and that's a three-year grant cycle which yep. would end this year is that correct um no actually the epa grant years it's confusing if they say 2019 Essentially, it ends at the end of, toward the end of next year. Okay, so there are, you have roughly 60% of that 300,000 available yet. Yes, we do. Um, we do anticipate incurring a lot of costs later this summer, particularly on the Badger site, but we still have quite a bit of funds available. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Good overview. Thanks. Yeah. Do we need any approvals here, Matt? Place in file? Yeah. Actually, it's informational, isn't it? Yep, yeah. this is, yep, correct. Probably I need to do anything. All right. Okay. Uh, next up is I-43 Business Park Expansion Project Update. Wendy, you're muted still. Muted. <laughs> there she goes. Okay. All right, I think... I must have clicked it a little fast, but I should, am I unmuted now? Is that? You are. Okay. I just wanted, this isn't as exciting as the brownfields, but it is kind of a different um, piece of the puzzle for us to move um, some of the development in the city forward. Um, about a month ago, we brought um, into, you know, before the group, um, a market study um, for the commercial market study for the city. Um, we're using some of that information to kind of strategize and plan how we want to move the city forward. And so part of it is the I-43 business park expansion. So uh, David and a couple of us kind of pulled our thoughts together as far as making a list of what items would need to be done in there. So we strategized that from the market study took the information and we're working through these. Um, we decided to develop a roadmap with that information. So we have a timeline of when we think the items should be completed or when we're working on them. Some of them go together and are interdependent um, but, and are gonna be worked on at the same time. So you'll see some overlapping, but we know that we wanna kick off with some ideas and then that'll trickle on to the next idea and that fits together with the next piece of the puzzle. And then we have, um, initials of who is taking care of those items and so um, who is taking a lead on that we probably will involve many different people throughout our department with that but um, we'll come back with um, updates along the way on how that project is happening so this is the i-43 business park um, development and you can kind of see um, how we've broken that up between staff and um, duties and timelines Right, Wendy, can I jump in for one quick second? Please do. David's been a big um, help on this, and so it's... Yeah, well, the only reason I wanted to jump in, if you could stop sharing your screen, just for ACE's um, benefit, since this might be all totally new for him, and just a quick two-minute... I won't even take two minutes, but um, let me share this. So what we're kind of talking about, if, can you all see the map? Yep. Okay, so in this black dash line is our existing I-43 Business Center, arguably the most successful business center in Wisconsin. I say it is, and lots of people say it is. Um, and our comprehensive plan always showed the business center extending sort of where you see this dark gray blob that I have on the map. So we started about two years ago now, uh, contacting all the owners out here, um, you know, you can see the wetland delineation that we're, wetland study that we had done shows where the wetlands are. Um, and we kind of came up with this concept. So what's in the red, dark red boundary or solid red boundary would be the expansion area, what we're calling I-43 East. Um, 
the starred properties the city already owns. And you can see they're kind of centered around Mason and Finger. And then based primarily on the market study, but um, still kind of working our way through that, it's sort of the light to medium industrial uh, need out there, a lack of land in the whole region for those types of users. Um, so that's kind of what we're proposing. We showed some of the other land uses around it to the south, uh, next to Bellevue. Bellevue has all residential to the south, uh, heavy wetlands in here. So we kind of left that as a residential pocket, uh, showed a, a sort of a communal green space or natural area in the middle. And then also some multifamily here transitioning. You can see the singles and the two families up here, sort of transitioning from, me, from Mason and kind of buffering them. Um, so this is just really the background of where we're going with that business center. And again, that was, I know uh, most of the EDA people have seen this before, but ACE has not. <laughs> and hopefully this is gonna be coming forward with more action. As Wendy was sharing that um, timeline, there's quite a few steps that'll be coming back to the EDA. Um, is it's really your recommendations that are gonna be going forward to the city council um, on whether we should purchase property, try to do a private property business center, um, you know, if we can negotiate on prices, we're gonna be coming back to this entity for all that. So the business park has always been the EDA's um, baby. Um, and I won't go bore you with the history, but it has been incredibly successful and uh, not to sound awful, but it's been a cash cow for the city um, for a lot of years, for about 40 years. So um, it's all full up now and I think we're ready to expand, but that'll be up to you guys in the council to decide. But hopefully we can make a good argument as the months progress. I just wanted to say that while the pandemic was happening, this was a great time to study it. And now with pent up demand, we know that there's businesses that are ready to emerge. And so I think our timing is really perfect for this particular development and having us have this all teed up and in the queue. So um, I want to thank you guys for your support through this uh, study and everything else. Um, but the exciting part is happening next. So hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Well, and, yeah. And we'll get more into the weeds with that timeline or the roadmap when he calls it the roadmap. Um, right now, we're really at still finding uh, comparable prices. Um, what's, you know, raw agricultural land that's going to be used for industrial worth. Um, and digging into that market study more, but really our next steps, which is this month and next month, are um, looking at the boundaries, coming up with phases, and starting to develop uh, design standards, covenants, that kind of stuff for this new park, whether it's private or public, publicly owned property. Um, and so those things will be, every month we'll be filtering that stuff through the EDA, um, you know, before it, it goes on forward. So there you go. Sorry, sorry, Wendy. Didn't mean to jump in. Okay. Now um, done. Wendy. Nope, that was it. Thank you very much. And thank you for all the information that was exchanged. I think that helped everyone. Good report. Thank you. Uh, and finally, director's report, Neil. Yep, I'll be brief. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of activity here uh, here very recently, which is obviously a good sign. We don't ever want to be bored in the world of economic development, so we're excited about that. Uh, the merged development agreement was approved by the city council here back on June 1st. So, uh, yes, Alder Johnson, they've told us that they've signed it, and theoretically, it's in the mail back on the way to us. So that's a big, that's a big, huge step uh, for us if we've actually we all get that moving forward. So we're excited to have that. <clears throat> um, you know, lots of other things, just a general, some other just general updates. We're getting ready to have our annual joint review board meeting here with the taxing jurisdictions uh, here later on this month. It's probably going to be the 22nd or 23rd. Uh, it's kind of where we provide an update on the financial performance of our existing TIF districts, as well as provide a kind of a sneak peek on on where we think future districts will be coming. There's two specific areas we're going to be looking at for sure here probably this year. Um, so we're going to, that'll be all presented here later months. Certainly, uh, folks are open and welcome to attend that if they have interest. We can also provide an update, uh, simply as a separate update as part of the director's report to this group as a separate one, uh, at a future meeting, if that was desirable as well. Uh, staff is also working on getting ready to kind of, uh, reissue, uh, 
uh, several RFPs, uh, one for the 436 South Monroe Avenue, Chicago and Monroe lot. There's also a um, hundred block of East Walnut Street. There's two sites. We're getting ready kind of to, those were previously issued, we're trying to update those RFPs and get them reissued just to see if we can get some uh, take advantage of some of the activity in the marketplace. There's a couple of other ones we're looking at, the former JBS site, uh, as well as the Adams Street parking lot next to the Bay Lake City Center building. We'd like to get those back. You know, certainly the JBS one we think is, we know is ready to move forward. We've already had de uh, developers contact us and express interest on the on that particular site. The um, the Adam Street parking lot is certainly a bit of a more challenge because of some of the, the, the uses and, and, and kind of the un certainty related to the building uh, adjacent to it, but we'd like to kind of get it out there to test the market again anyway for that particular lot. That is pretty much the city owned parking, the RDA open parking lot that's right next to that building downtown. So we'd like to, while we get those first two, those will be out hopefully here end of this month. The later two probably be a little bit later this summer because we think we need to put a little bit more effort into putting some additional information back into those particular RFPs. Um, trying to think of the only other one there. Um, just want to make a note on the University Heights uh, residential that we were working on with DeVillers. Uh, they are in process of trying to possibly sell that uh, property to tune-in properties. Uh, that's the former JBS site where that's been redeveloped and we're putting in some housing on that site. Um, kind of trying to work through and negotiate a new agreement with, with the new developer on that one. So uh, basic premise has been kind of presented to RDA, uh, but some details still to be presented on that in terms of getting that industrial site. Uh, redeveloped and cleaned up. Uh, hopefully not too much work we have to do on that one, but fortunately we have Matt's programs that he just talked about earlier in case we need them. Uh, this is a likelihood we might need that. So um, just a general comment, um, both David and I have been ha have had several conversations with residential subdivision developers who are saying that the cost of infrastructure is prohibitive and looking for assistance to try to put public infrastructure for single family residential areas. It's a little bit of a uh, frustrating situation to be in and from them and to you know see if there's a way we can actually do that we are somewhat limited as a city in terms of how much we can actually do for those types of projects so uh trying to get creative and identify some different easier ways to kind of maybe make that possible well, obviously a lot of the projects the redevelopment projects we've been doing have been very very tiff oriented other programs are available that, that logically make sense uh, from a legal standpoint, not only from a develop and a development standpoint as well, but we are a little bit more limited when it comes to trying to figure out a way to somehow finance some of the public infrastructure, which I think in my personal history, that's usually been carried by the developer uh, throughout my career and projects have done there. And then that simply has worked into the purchase price of the sale. Um, here there's concern over, the, you know, what the upfront costs of some of that being somewhat, you know, pricing maybe some of those housing developments out of the market. So we're continuing that conversation to figure out if there's something we can do with that. Um, similar to some of the things that Matt has mentioned with the shipyard and with Legacy, we have some couple of comments trying to figure out how we can actually um, possibly do some design standards for the downtown area. Uh, we had a couple of inquiries here recently. We want to take Take a look and see if there's some interest in some in the ability to maybe put some of those things in place for the downtown area and actually defining exactly what that area is and what sort of infrastructure things we may be looking at. Uh, and then last but not least, I know Erin uh, Runski is on the line here. She has been working to bring our parklets program forward. Uh, I think it's pretty much ready to go at this point, or with, really within the last month or so. Um, so she's been working very hard. It has the, I think she has the actual uh, policies are done and completed, working on the application materials, and the, hopefully they have those out here uh, in the very near future. So if anyone has any questions, she is certainly available uh, on, on the call to answer any questions for that. And that's my report, Mr. Chair. Okay, very good. Um, our next meeting is so. It does say July 5th. I believe that is actually going to be the holiday because I believe July 4th is a Sunday this year. So we'll have to confirm that meeting date, but we'll, we'll certainly check everyone's availability as we get that scheduled. So. Very good. So we'll entertain a motion for adjournment, I guess. Anybody? So moved. Okay. I'll second that. Um, everybody, uh, any, all those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Welcome, Ace. We'll get Thank you a more you formal welcome here in the future.
Welcome, Ace. Sure, Welcome, man. Ace. So thanks. It's great to meet you. Congratulations so, on the son's graduation, yeah, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Just the last one out the house, so three yeah. down. <laughs> 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 thanks, everybody. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.